this is the vintage RVer and uh, wanted to do a little intro to this video. Uh, been doing a lot of fix-its lately and uh, fixed the, the hair to some extent, although, you know, can't, uh, you know, completely hide the uh, receding hairline, but it is what it is, as I always say. And uh, so, um, we had a little power steering issue last episode. Uh, we have a little less of a power steering issue this episode, which is awesome. And it's also related to the brakes. Um, because the Chevy or GM Hydro Boost unit that is uh, ubiquitous on a lot of these RVs of this era uh, help boost not only the uh, power steering, but the power brakes. And I've noticed I've had to pump the brakes the last couple trips. Had to go boop, 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 and push the brake pedal down. Didn't have a lot of chattering or anything, but you're going to notice in this video, um, finally got the uh, hard line fabricated because it's no longer available, MLA, as we call it. And, uh, you know, had to do some fabrication, looked, uh, the internet is a great place. There's a lot of RV forums um, that talked about using compression fittings that leaked uh, because compression fittings are garbage. That's why you can't use them. By the way, you can't use them for brake lines in most states uh, for illegal repair because compression lines are garbage. And you definitely can't use them for power steering uh, high pressure lines because again the, the amount of pressure that's going through the lines is substantial and uh, will blow right through the compression fittings and out and down and uh, you won't have what you want to have so I went in and got some actual flare fittings some actually threaded union th uh, flare fittings which I shared on the video um, they're a lot better but you have to have a flaring tool uh, you know pipe flaring tool and uh, things of that nature so you gotta have a couple extra tools they're not horrible you can get them fairly inexpensively um, and uh, it helps join the the splices together when you do them I don't have the tool to do the power steering there's like a little stop ring that's formed on the actual line I don't have that but I bet you could find it um, be kind of cool to do that because I bet you could do pretty much all my my high pressure lines that way with some tubing and it'd be kind of cool to do that um, but anyways I got again I'll spoil it um, got things up and running but I do need to bleed them so I need to get a bleeder tool which I've ordered it's a kind of like a hand crank vacuum pump along with some adapters to go down into the fluid reservoirs and create a vacuum to pull all the air that is uh, trapped in the in the system which will ruin your pump if you're not careful. So, um, again, it's a fix-it video. Sorry uh, for some folks who like the the, the fun and you know, happy-go-lucky trip videos or the humorous, humorous videos, but I did want to put it out there um, that I am fixing things and things are getting fixed. I've got my RV fridge up and running on gas again. I'm gonna check the temperature on that because the fridge is kind of warm. Fridge is the freezer is great. Fridge is kind of warm. Hope I, I fix that with some clearing out of the flu. Anyways, so I'm gonna let you go. Uh, enjoy the video. Again, if you have any questions about RV fixits or uh, how I screwed things up the first time and then fixed them the next time, uh, I'm welcome for any and all comments uh, and uh, inquiries. And uh, like I said, uh, it's a Chevy P30 Allegro. And uh, I enjoy it because it's a Chevy and it's fairly simple and straightforward from a drivetrain standpoint to fix it. And uh, there's just some curveballs with the motorhome factor. But other than that, um, again, this is another fix it video. It's not like tons of humor in it, it's just me trying to fix some of the things on a 30 some odd year old RV that break from time to time. Um, so, again, Enjoy the video. Happy, safe, and healthy RV. Take care. It's sort of upside down and backwards, but whatever. So that's the line right there that I'm taking out. Okay. I've already taken it out up here by the hydro boost. You can kind of see that. Get my hand out, grubby hand out of the way. 
there we go so there's my hand in here there's that right there it's loose okay I'm gonna try to grab it but you can't reach it unbelievable I can't reach it it's crazy let's go from this side okay so there's this side here there's that one it's pulled out that's a 5 ace by the way out of the top of the hydro boost unit right there there's the hydro boost unit there's some flex lines these are the ones I'm gonna there's that crazy elbow so there's that one here uh, power steering one it's a little wet I'm gonna replace this one but this hard line comes around there's a bolt there half inch comes around this is only wet I believe because of the other pinhole leak so I've loosened this up with an 18 inch 18 inch yeah 18 millimeter uh, wrench and it's taken a little while it took a little while to muscle it out but it did come out so I'm gonna get the pan underneath it and I'm just slowly undoing you can see the rust here it's all crudded up and there we go I can only do it a couple turns at a time or a couple like you know a third of a turn or whatever looks like she's gonna come out here in a minute yep so I got her one more time looks like she's pretty loose there yep yep there she goes there she goes you can see the old ring on her she's dripping right now down into the pan and I'm gonna take this bad boy and I'm gonna deal with her here Yep. So loosen that up there. Got some fresh O rings. So that'll be good. And uh, we'll take care of this situation here pretty soon. Here. Uh, I'll get pulled it out. If I can get it out from every little crevice here. There's like a million little spots it can get caught on. Amazing that this thing can just get wedged in there like that. Must be fun to install. There we go. Out and under. Alright, let's get this bad boy out. Okay. And the pinhole is like right in this corner somewhere. That it was squirting through. So we got this one out. We're gonna clean this one up. And, uh, whew, alrighty. Yeah, we're gonna deal some of this here pretty soon. Whew, boy, it took a little bit of effort. Okay, so this is the uh, pressure side booster pump to steering gear. So that comes out of the booster pump, the, the hydro boost comes around, down and around. And this is about where the leak was, okay? Now, you can almost see it. It's a little hard because of the, of the bright light, and it's focusing in on it now, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Sorry for the jogging around. You see the, oh, there's my dirty fingernail. There's the pinhole. You see that right there? And it looks like a little spray orifice too, doesn't it, the way it's coming through, but it's rotted through on that bend. And it's created that teeny little pinhole. It's not even a millimeter. It's like a tenth of a millimeter. I mean, it's tiny. That's like uber tiny right there. I'm going to try to focus in a little better. And that's what's causing the power steering leak. So a lot of pressure, a little hole, a lot of fluid coming out. Okay, so what I've got to do now is I've got to create a patch for this portion and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my um, one of my cheaper hoses and I'm going to cut it I got brake line and everything but I can't replicate this this stop down here that is right here see how there's like a stop in the end of the tubing and then the o-ring fits there I can't really replicate I don't have a tool to do that I probably could make one 
with kind of like a, a punch and a, and a sleeve mm -hmm. and weld them together and, and do something that would entrap that pipe and smash it. But I really don't want to get into it. So I think I got a place where I can put a splice here where it's clean. Uh, I got a compression fitting, but I'm told I have to solder it because it's too high a pressure. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace this bend. I'm going to cre recreate this bend as best I can and uh, eliminate that pinhole that's there. Got quite the wildlife out here today. Anyways, so I've used my wide jaw vise. I have cut off the end of this $13 hose because this is the end I needed. As you can see here, I've got various pieces of 3 six, Three is brake lines. So I'm going to replicate this bend here. I've straightened this out as much as I can here from it being that crazy bend by just gently bending it back. I need to get it to back here. So basically I'm going to replicate that with this. But what I'm going to do instead of a crappy compression fitting, which I know is going to leak and I've tried soldering um, and it's not really worked so well, so what I'm going to do, I got smart, went back to the great handy dandy auto place I like that's open on Sundays, and I got some of these here. So, as you can see here, there, there's a coupler, a union, and basically it fits these guys here. Either end goes in with a flare fitting. So what I need to do is I need to take my flare kit that I got here because I can't find my other one put these put these on first flare these two ends flare these two ends and then this coupling which I bought two of them just in case for some reason that coupling will go there and each one of these nuts will back into each side of it and clamp that together I'll use some tape on that to seal it but the flange fitting fits down inside there you can see when you put the flange on there it really forms a tight fit and uh, that's what I'm gonna do and that should allow, allow for enough resistance to the high pressure because this is the high pressure and this is from the hydro pump to the steering gear so I want to make sure that this is as tight as possible as I can all right so a few minutes later after I've used my kit here and uh, and also had to cut it the pipe a little bit because <laughs> I got enthusiastic and started to flare the pipe before I had the fitting on it, so I had to cut a little bit off of the pipe in order to um, facilitate. There it is. Here's that little bit there. So I started flaring it, and I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get the nut on first. So there they are. So here is the original. You can see here I got a, missed my uh, start mark on my uh, tube bender here and bent it too quick, too soon. So I had to kind of do a little angle and then come back and do it kind of dead on there. So it's, you know, close for what I got to do. There's the other end. So obviously these two are going to fit together. I'm going to put some, some uh, Teflon tape on it for some extra seal. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this bad boy, fit it fairly snug, and find the angle. Because remember... Um, this is at one angle, right? This is at one, this is at one angle, and that's at another angle down where the where the pump is. So I'm thinking it's more like more like that in 3D. Can you see that in 3D there? I don't know if you can. Kind of like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the rig and loose fit, snug fit it, so I know it's in the right location. Then I can tighten this fitting up, and then put it install it in the rig with some new O-rings, and uh, install it and see what she does. All right, I got my fitting here, which is that is the gear end, that is the um, hydro boost end, so it's more like this kind of layout right now. So I'm going to go up under here, and uh, with the little light I have, I'm going to, uh, jeepers, you think my settings would be something where I'd be able to do something a little better with what I got here, but I guess we'll just deal with it. So we've got, obviously I got to, 
fit that from there up to up over there just to the other side of that little hose that you see there so i'm going to leave that kind of dangling in here somewhere i hope on the oh now i'm going to shut all the light off of course like an idiot there we go put that there and i got this down here so i'm going to take this and hopefully not botch anything up too bad and you know this kind of fit in kind of funky so i got to kind of fit it in at an oddball angle you got to get it close to the hydro boost thing here and then I gotta get it down under like kind of like that and it's you know gonna be kind of fitting around I can't really do this with my hand on the camera and everything else so I'm gonna pause it and just okay took some jigging and jogging but I managed to get the hydro boost upper part of the it's up in there. You can just see it there, right there. Upper Hydro Boost cable, just twisted in a couple turns. Then, of course, you can see here, kind of does this crazy jiggity jog, whatever. Comes around. There's my there's my fitting, right? My better fitting, and then of course, I've got it just snugged in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark that, pull it back out. I'm gonna mark it with a sharpie and uh, then tighten it up so all the marks match. And then I'll reinstall this. It should be real fun because it's been a little bit of monkey business trying to maneuver this thing in where it needs to go. But uh, I still have to install the new O-rings and all that, so we don't want to mess that up. I want to do this install once and be done with it. Got the RV or started up here and a little poppity poppity again. Uh, I'm getting low on the fuel, so I gotta be careful. And, uh, but I can see under here, so far, I do not have a fountain of, uh, stuff blowing off of my, uh, steering gear. You know, that does not mean that I am, uh, out of the woods yet. Um, obviously I'm on gravel. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna turn the wheel a little bit. Ooh. You can hear that. So. so we're gonna check. I got some more power steering fluid here. Obviously the system may need to get bled. But we're gonna let that go as it is. Because it is standing still. Let's stick with it. bubble up through the uh that was not me it was somebody with a trailer anyways definitely have to bleed the system a lot of air hear that
but I will say, other than having to bleed the system, which is something we can do, <coughs> we can make it happen. Um, I don't see any leaks up here. In this part of the line. And I don't see any leaks down here. On this part of the line. And there you go. There is the, uh, it's not a compression fitting, it's actually a real fitting, a flange fitting. So that looks to be holding up because there doesn't look to be any drips coming off of it. So that's cool. So hopefully I can let it run for a little bit, warm it up. Yeah, I'll pump the brakes a little bit. That kind of stuff. And uh, let's see what we got going on here. Thanks for watching. Greatly appreciated. And uh, the work continues on the vintage RV. But just so you know, everybody, when you uh, have a hydro boost system, it does not work off the vacuum source that is in front of the distributor. It uh, works off a separate source, hydraulic source, and basically it boosts both the brakes and the power steering. So, you know, if you do this like this, hear it? That's because there's air in the system, okay? I don't want to do it too far, I don't want to freak it out. But when you press the, the brake, because the systems are linked, which is for better or for worse, right? Kind of like a marriage. Hear that? So there's air in the system I need to bleed out, which is fine, I'll bleed it out, but I just want to let you know that's what's going on there and you know that's probably one reason why my brakes weren't working the greatest because the uh, there was a minor leak in one of the lines and I never knew it so air was probably getting in the line like there is now very similar for that scene same sound whether it's the brakes or it's the uh, power steering. So I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna bleed that out and uh, get it all fixed up. But at least when I hop out of here, <laughs> at least I hope so. When I hop out of here, which I'm gonna try to hop out of here without killing myself here. Um, if you notice, no leaks, which is awesome for now. Anyways, something else may pop or snap or whatever. At least this time, it's good. We're all good. We're good. Woohoo! Progress is being made. Take care.